Welcome to the third mini lecture for this chapter. So we're gonna pick up right where we left off just talking about different road crop rotations that we have that are pretty common in the United States. So the next one we're gonna look at is cotton peanut. And as you could <clears throat> probably guess, this is um, more used in regions like the South and the Southwest that grow a lot of cotton and peanuts. And there's a, you know, kind of a, a misconception with, with this rotation. A lot of people think that it's been, you know, a thing for quite some time, but you know, this actually, uh, cotton used to actually be a, a monoculture just because it was, you know, it was grown so much in, in the South and it was, it was suitable for those areas. So when uh, the soil started to get depleted from nutrients, they decided to put another crop in there and that was a peanut because of um, the disease and the, the pest infestations that would would help break that uh, those cycles. And so then they started, so it would, you know, cotton would be one year and then peanut would be a, the other year. And then someone who we know very famous around the four state area is George Washington Carver because uh, he was he was very big into the peanut world. And he, uh, you know, was was advocated for that to be grown in a cotton rotation. And so, uh, not only is he very famous around here because of all of his ag work uh, with peanuts, but he was also pretty. He's also pretty famous in the the southern and the southwestern part of the United States because of that as well. Next is a cotton sorghum, uh, or you could actually do wheat. You could do cotton wheat, and this is actually done in the Southern Plains, and um, this is done a lot in, in Southern Oklahoma. And because the cotton is gonna be the cash crop, we would put sorghum or wheat in there to um, kind of offset some feed costs if you were uh, um, a livestock feeder or any, any sort of um, nutrient de deficiencies that you might see, we might throw in sorghum. So pretty pretty common in the south part, southern part of Oklahoma and um, most of Texas in any part of the southern plains. So what are some advantages of, of crop production? So here are just uh, a few that, um, that are really important to a producer. So um, weed control is number one, disease and insect control. So we're able to really suppress a lot of the diseases and insects that would come up um, from, <clears throat> from different, just one, um, one crop and soil fertility is another one there's less risk because you're you're kind of putting um your eggs in in a couple different baskets so you're not just banking on one crop every single year um, rotation effects um, it does reduce soil erosion because of different root systems that are then put into the soil and you know the whole the whole reason why we do this is to recycle those nutrients to decompose different type of of crops within our ground so that um, the next crop would would have sufficient nutrients would have um, would, would be able to live well because there's not as much disease and insect um, vulnerability within that field and so really good advantages of, of crop rotation. So we've talked about different rotations. Now let's look at monoculture versus polyculture. So monoculture is just growing one crop in a field during one specific growing season. So whether that's a winter crop, a summer crop, whatever that is, it's you're, you're just growing one crop in that in that season. And a lot of popular ones that we see around this area uh, are like winter wheat, corn, uh, rice in southern Oklahoma, soybeans. Those are all monocultures, and we do this for a lot of different advantages. One being one big one being we can target the chemicals uh, for for either fertilization or maybe a micronutrient, whatever that is, we're able to put that in the soil or top dress it on that, on that crop and be very specific to what that chemical would be. Uh, have to have some specialized machinery. You know, if you're gonna, if you're gonna harvest soybeans, you have to have a, soy, or a, a bean head for your combine. So those are all very, very important. <clears throat> um, very efficient to fertilize and our state schools do a really good job in, in ag, Ag scientists do a really good job of making sure that we have varieties that will work within the ground that we're growing, the climate that we're growing in, and um, you know there's different field days all over the United States every every growing season to show farmers what what would work best with their soil in their area, and that's really important for uh, for that producer to make to make those good decisions on what kind of seed to buy. 
This is a soybean mono monoculture, so you can see the soybeans growing there, and you can probably see some debris uh, in between those rows. That's probably wheat stubble, and that wheat stubble is really important for uh, erosion control, So, and then it's decaying into the soil, it's decomposing into the soil, so it's just adding back nutrients, which is, which is what we want. As you can guess, polyculture means more than one, so two or more crops uh, that are growing in the same the same growing season and I'm going to show you a couple different pictures of those as well. This is uh, pretty cool because it can really help out with environmental resources and soil resources so kind of in picking and picking and choosing what nutrients is being taken from the soil and what nutrients is being put back into the soil. So one crop might be putting bringing it up you know taking it up but one crop might be um, um, putting it back in. So those are those are pretty cool to utilize those resources. Although this is kind of hard to manage. You have to really have the the specialized equipment. You have to know, um, you have to really check those crops. You have to crop scout more than what you would in a monoculture setting just to make sure everything's growing right, making sure that pests aren't um, aren't uh, impeding on on both of those crops or more of those crops and um, but they, they do have some advantages you know you're gonna have a, two different types of income if you're selling them uh, whether that's for hay whatever but um, a lot of a lot of people will see some yield stability so it's gonna kind of bump their yield up and, and put it to a, a yield marker where they where they really want so um, those are just a couple examples of uh, advantage advantages of polyculture so this is a picture of alfalfa and canary grass. So this would be a polyculture because there are two grasses growing in there. This is uh, used really commonly in, uh, in dairy farms. So um, <clears throat> this grass may or may not be harvested together um, or, or separate. So depending on what, uh, what kind of feed program that dairyman's got going on, uh, they will either harvest it as hay or, or graze it as well. So mixed intercropping, this is considered a polyculture because we're working with two or more crops. And this is more of a, of a random type setting. This is uh, more so on, on the ranch type setting for forages. And so we will mix uh, different native plant mixes, which can, which can go you know, up to 30, 40 uh, different, different plant mixes. Um, hay mixes, alley cropping, pea mixture, wheat mixture, and we'll talk about those as well. So these are just uh, mixed intercropping and, and they're growing together at, a, at random. So um, not, not m as much uh, management goes on with this mixed intercropping. So this is alfalfa and an oat <clears throat> companion crop. And again, in a companion crop, we're just, we're wanting um, that cash crop to be fed or to be um, just kind of a companion to that, um, the, we want the companion crop to be a uh, companion to that cash crop. And so in this setting, alfalfa would be that cash crop because it's it's widely used for a lot of different um, hay mixtures. And, and that oat will actually bring bring in some more nutrients and, and some protein as well. So strip cropping, this is a polyculture, but we look, we <clears throat> grow it in monocultures, which is kind of um, confusing, but I'm gonna show you a picture and that'll, that'll help you um, understand it a little bit better. So we we do this on um, sloping lands, more so sloping lands that are pretty highly erodible. So um, we use this as erosion erosion control, and um, <clears throat> we use a contour strip uh, to do that. So an annual crop will will then alternate with perennial crops, and I'll show you a picture of that right here. So here's what a contour strip looks like. So you could definitely see different strips. Uh, you can you can see two different type of types of crops there. Uh, one is wheat and one is soybeans. <clears throat> and so um, this is interesting because they're gonna they're gonna um, harvest these two at different times. But the whole point of it is for that um, for for erod erosion concerns, which is which is awesome, and it's awesome that we we can do that. So you're actually getting two, two crops in one, one, type, one setting. Not going to harvest them at the same, but, same time, but you're still getting it within the same year. So living mulches, these are important because uh, we look at this uh, more so round year as, as round year ground cover. So it's, it doesn't necessarily have to be something that is um, uh, just for one growing season. 
Uh, it does, although, give us some um, management challenges because it is all year, and um, that can be that can be good or bad depending on what kind of uh, weather you're having within that that year. Um, this helps recover um, that the soil recover from that harvest, so just able to decompose that that um, mulch into into the soil. So here's a picture of that. We have some corn uh, living in a, a mulch system. Uh, there on the left hand side and and that's really important just because we're seeing that um, we're going to be able to see that decompose into into the ground then just adding nutrients back uh, back to where it should be